Now, let's also talk a little bit about going back to here. When the acceleration is not zero, what does that tell you about the net force on an object? The acceleration is not zero. What does that tell us about the net force on the object? It's changing. It's not zero. Which of those should I write down? Should I write down that the net force is changing, or should I write down that the net force is not zero? Are we assuming that like something has a mass because everything has a mass? Yeah, we will assume that it has a mass. That's a good point. And then it's not zero? In fact, there's a name for that. What's the name for the relationship between these two lines? This says that if there's something's acceleration, accelerating, there must be a force on the object. Remember, what scientific principle is that? If something's accelerating, there must be a force on the object. Or putting it another way, suppose the acceleration is zero. What does that tell you about the net force? Zero. Yeah, what's the name for that scientific principle? Uh, one of Newton's laws. Yeah, this is Newton's first law. This is Newton's law. Or remember that this would mean that the velocity is constant. Remember that Newton's first law is that an object, uh, if there's no force, an object will either be motionless or move with constant velocity. Newton's first law is that when there's no net force, an object will either be motionless or move with constant velocity. Another way to put this is, remember, we don't need any force to cause a velocity. Forces all only cause accelerations. All right, this is a good thing to review. Remember that a second ago, someone thought that maybe when this was not zero, that meant that the force was changing. That's not true. That would be confusing the relationship uh, between force and acceleration and the relationship between acceleration and velocity. The acceleration tells you how the velocity is changing. It doesn't tell you how the force is changing. It just tells you if a force exists. That uh, just tells us if the force exists. All right, so going back to here, if there's an acceleration, there must be a force. If there's an acceleration, there must be a force. What's the relationship between the direction of the acceleration and the direction of the force? For example, if we're accelerating up, we know there must be a force. Um, what would be the direction of the net force here? Since they have a direct relationship, then it also up. Yeah, that's right. We can kind of get that from Newton's second law. If you write Newton's second law in vector form, here's Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. Well, the mass is a positive number, and that means uh, if you multiply a vector by a positive number, you get something that's pointing in the same direction. So part of Newton's second law is that force and acceleration point in the same direction. Or to be more precise, the net force points in the same direction as the acceleration. Um, so going back to here, what would be the direction of the net force in this case? To the right. Yeah. And what's the direction of the net force here? And here, uh, so what we just saw here is that when the net force is parallel to the velocity, it's causing the object to speed up. When the net force is anti-parallel to the velocity, it's causing the object to slow down. And when the net force is perpendicular to the velocity, it's changing the object's direction. Um, so the interpretation of the relationship between acceleration and velocity is pretty much the same as the interpretation for the relationship between force. Of course, these don't have to have the same numerical magnitude, but we can represent them by an arrow that's pointing in the same direction. To speed something up, you should push in the direction of the velocity. To slow something down, you should push anti-parallel to the velocity. To change something's direction, you push perpendicular to the velocity. And if you want to change both the speed and the direction, you push at a diagonal to the velocity. And then we can break the force of the components. You could have f parallel and f perpendicular. Well, f parallel speeds up or slows down the object, and f perpendicular is changing the speed of the object. So. What should the work depend on? Should it depend on f perpendicular or f parallel, or both? Now remember that the work is supposed to tell us how the kinetic energy is changing. Well, what type of force would change the kinetic energy, f parallel or f perpendicular? Why parallel and not perpendicular? Because it only, the velocity only, we only care about the speed. Right. As we talked about earlier, we only care about the speed here, not the direction. So the component of the force that's perpendicular is only going to change the object's direction. Well, that doesn't have any effect on the kinetic energy. Only the component of the force that's parallel to the velocity can change its speed. So now we have to update this formula. To use this symbol here, 
the work depends only on the component of the force that's parallel to the, to the movement. Your instructor might not have used this uh, symbol yet in class, but you'll see it in the textbook, and you'll be using it as the weeks go on, so we might as well uh, introduce it here, since this is the first time it applies. The work only depends on the component of the force that is parallel to the movement. And um, usually we're going to try to just use formulas to figure out magnitudes. So again, I'm going to put in these dots here to show that these symbols all are just going to stand for magnitudes. And we usually try to use our common sense to work out the sign. So it's very important to work out the sign for the work, but we'll, we'll try to use our common sense for that. So for example, so um, would this be doing zero work or non-zero work? Yeah. Now, let's figure out whether the work here is going to be positive or negative. Well, is this going to be speeding the object up or slowing it down? Yeah. Speeding it up. So will the kinetic energy increase or decrease? Yes. Increase. You think that should that represent positive or negative work? Positive. Right. Because in this case, the change in kinetic energy will be positive. When you're speeding something up, the change in kinetic energy will be positive. Why would it be negative? Because it's slowing the object down. Yeah. Here the force is anti-parallel to the velocity. Well, we've just decided that when the force is anti-parallel to the velocity, you're slowing the object down. So delta k will be negative. Well, if delta k is negative, the work should be negative. So we'll put in here a negative work. I'm going to use w for work, but don't confuse that with w for weight. Maybe I should be showing this as a capital W for work. All right, so we just saw that we don't need any formulas to figure out the sign for the work. Um, if the force is parallel to the movement, you should do positive work. And if the force is anti-parallel to the movement, you're doing negative work. Sometimes uh, there, there are ways that you can figure out the sign of the work using formulas, but those tend to be confusing and people tend to make mistakes. So it's always good to use your common sense to check what the sign is going to be. We know that getting the signs right is crucial, so this is a very important thing to have in your notes, how to find the sign of the work. Notice that it doesn't matter here that the force is in the positive direction, so to speak, if we chose these as our positive directions. What matters is not comparing this to the axes. What matters is comparing it to the velocity. How much work would this force be doing? No. Yeah, that's very important. Why is it doing no work? Well, because it's only changing the direction. It's perpendicular to the velocity, so it's only changing direction, so it's doing no work. Again, in ordinary life, we, we would kind of say that we're doing work anytime we exert a force. But in physics, we're only doing work when we exert a force that changes the kinetic energy. So in physics, this would be doing no work. How about this? Is this doing work? Yes. Yeah. Positive or negative work? Positive. Yeah. How do you know? By breaking it into components. And which component should we focus on? The one that's parallel. F parallel. The component that's parallel to the movement. And you can see that this F parallel is parallel to the movement. So we're um, speeding the object up. So this is doing work. F perpendicular we can disregard. It's not going to do any work. Only F parallel is going to do work. Notice again, there's no point calling this F sub Y. What matters here is that this is the component that's parallel to V. Notice that theta here is the angle between the force and the velocity. 
since the velocity is vertical, theta here is the angle between the vertical and the force. Theta is the angle between the force and the velocity. So how would we find F parallel if we know what F is? F parallel is cosine. So the formula would be cosine right. theta. Because the component of F that's parallel to the velocity is adjacent to theta. And let's just keep focusing on, uh, well, eh, I'll do it that way. So now we have a new formula for work. And this is one you'll definitely see in class, um, or at least uh, in the textbook. You probably need this in the homework. Um, the work is the force times the cosine of theta times delta r. 